I'm Seema and welcome to my chemistry videos. Before I move on to the study of orbitals, I would like to discuss the quantum numbers a little more. As I told you in the previous video, we discussed all the four quantum numbers. I'm just going to summarize it. Let us take the shells. The first shell is known as the K shell. The quantum number N, that is the principal quantum number for the K shell is 1. L, that is the second quantum number, the azimuthal quantum number for N equal to 1 would be 0. The value of L, there would be only one value and that would be 0. Because the value of L is from 0 to n minus 1 values. The name of the subshell, if the value of L is 0, then the name of that subshell is S. What would be the value of ML? What would be the name of the orbital? If the value of L is 0, then the value of ML is plus minus L plus 1 and that 1 is actually 0. So, 0 plus minus L would be 0 and 1 would be uh, 1 value and that 1 value would be 0. So, how many orbitals does this have? Does the K-shell have? It has only one orbital. One orbital of the S-type. Total number of orbitals in the shell? One. And if there is one orbital, how many electrons would be there? Two electrons. Let us come to the next shell now. L. After the K shell, let us now move to the L shell. The L shell, the principal quantum number for L shell is 2. The value of L for this would be from 0 to n minus 1. So, since n is 2, so n minus 1 would be 1. It has two values 0 and 1. Let me write it this way vertically. The values are 0 and 1. 0 would be s and now since the s orbital or the s subshell was of the k shell therefore we write it as we write the n here so it is 1s these orbitals the s orbitals of the first shell are known as 1s orbitals so the s orbitals of the second shell are known as the 2s orbitals and this one obviously would be a p orbital because this would be named as 2 since it belongs to the second shell it would be 2p i hope i'm clear the s orbital 0 l is equal to 0 means it's an s orbital l is equal to 1 means it's a it is p subshell and p subshell is of the second shell therefore we write it is the p subshell of the second shell we call it we now name it 2 P. The values of ML for 2S, the value of ML would be 0. But for 2P, the value would be, since L is 1, it will be minus 1, 0 and plus 1. The value of ML is from my plus minus L and 0. So it has 3 values. So how many orbitals are there? The s orbitals, there is one s orbital in the L shell and there are three p orbitals. So total number of orbitals would be four and hence in the second shell, the total number of electrons would be eight. Since each orbital can have two electrons and a total of four orbitals are there, therefore the second shell has a capacity of eight electrons. Let us now move to the next shell. K shell, L shell, M shell. The M shell is the third shell and what would be the value of L in this case? It would be 0, 1 and 2. There would be three values of L. 0, 1 and 2. 0 would be now since we are talking it is the S orbital of the third shell. So this orbital would be named as 3S. This would be 3P and this would be 3D. What would be the values of M now? For the S orbital, the value would be 0. For the P orbital, the value would be minus 1, 0, plus 1. And for the D orbital, it would be minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, and plus 2. 
because the values are from plus minus L plus 1 and that one value is 0. So how many orbitals do we have now in the M shell? The S orbitals, we have one S orbital, we have three P orbitals and we have five D orbitals. Therefore, what is the total number of orbitals that we have here now? 5 plus 3 plus 1 is 9. So we have 9 total orbitals and therefore in the third shell, that is the M shell, the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated would be 18. Right? So now let us move on to the N shell. The N shell is the fourth shell. The uh, azimuthal quantum numbers would be 0, 1, 2 and 3. These would now be 4s, 4p, 4d and 4f. 4s would be 0, 4p would be minus 1, 0, plus 1, 4d would be minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1 and plus 2 and 4f would be minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2 and plus 3. In other words, in the fourth shell now, how many orbitals do we have? We have one s orbital, three p orbitals, five d orbitals and seven f orbitals. Clear? So now what is the total here? Seven, ten, fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen is the total number of orbitals in the fourth shell. And since there are sixteen orbitals, the number of electrons would be 32 since in each orbital there can be two electrons. So this is how we calculate the maximum capacity of electrons in each shell, in each orbital and how the basic layout is in an atom. Let's try to solve just one or two problems. The question is what is the total number of orbitals associated with the principal quantum number n is equal to 3? If n is equal to 3, what is n is equal to 3 is the m shell. So what is the total number of orbitals in m is equal to 3? We see here the total number of orbitals we've calculated is 9. And we know the formula for this is 2, sorry, is n squared. The total number of orbitals is in a shell is given by n squared. And the third shell is 3, 3 squared would be equal to 9. So we have nine orbitals in the third shell. And how many electrons would be there in the third shell? If there are nine orbitals, we know every orbital has two electrons, so it is 18. But the formula is 2n squared, which is equal to 2 into 3 squared, which is 2 into 9, that's 18. So you have 18 electrons in the third shell. So this is how we can solve problems if we have this basic knowledge of the quantum numbers and about the capacity of all the shells. For this question, I would again like to repeat that why does the third shell have nine orbitals? Because for the third shell, the number of values of L would be 3, 0, 1 and 2. And these three values would have, 0 would have one orbital. 1 would have 3 orbitals, it means they are 3 p orbitals and 2 would have 5 orbitals which are 5 d orbitals. The sum of these th 3 that is 5 plus 3 plus 1 comes out to be 9 and that's why there are 9 orbitals in the third shell. Just the knowledge of the quantum numbers and this basic layout will help you solve lots of numerical problems. So in the next video, we are going to solve a few numerical problems before we proceed to the study of the orbitals. Thank you for watching this video and please like the video and subscribe to my channel and keep returning for more videos on chemistry. Bye-bye.